everyone. Uh, uh, welcome uh, to a live stream uh, that we are doing today, me and Adam Ramon. Uh, hopefully, you will enjoy this. Uh, this is our first time we're doing this together, and uh, we pray by the uh, uh, by the power of uh, God and the Holy Spirit that we will be able to uh, continue to do this. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, periodically, I would say, um, hopefully, once a month, maybe even on a weekly basis at some point. With me here, my dear brother, Sam Shermo. And Sam, welcome aboard, brother. Hey, good to have you, brother. Uh, good to be here with you by the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Guys, just want them to know, Amen. bear with us. We had some technical difficulties because Satan's been attacking us, trying to discourage us, discourage us from being faithful to Jesus, glorifying Jesus Christ and getting together. To Amen. proclaim the gospel. So just bear with us in Jesus' name. So good to be here, serving with you, serving our Lord Jesus, and serving the brethren. Amen. Brother, um, you wanted to uh, talk today about a number of issues, but one of them was this interesting article that uh, you uh, reposted, I believe, uh, on Facebook that has to do with the fact that you said, Muhammad acknowledged that Allah has uh, children. Yep. Uh, would be, uh, it would be really interesting for you to share about that so that people know where to go, of course, to find it and uh, what exactly are the findings that you are alluding to. Yeah. Well, before I even do that, you know, it's my habit to always invoke the God and Father of Lord Jesus to bless him. Because honestly, and I mean this from my heart, I'm not qualified to talk about Jesus Christ. I'm not qualified to proclaim his gospel. <clears throat> I'm too wicked and sinful. But it's because of the love and mercy and compassion of Jesus Christ that he's pleased to use us who are far from qualified, unworthy to utter his holy name, to glorify his name by the power of the Holy Spirit. So I just want to praise the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. First, I want to ask the Father to forgive me for my failures, for my struggles with my own carnal flesh. <clears throat> and I ask the Father to have mercy on all of us, to have mercy on me to wash us Amen. in the holy blood of Jesus Christ, to give us Amen. the power to crucify our flesh, to die to our flesh and not walk in the flesh, but in the power and the life of the Holy Spirit. And Father, we ask in Jesus' name, bless my brother and I, cleanse our motives, cleanse our, our hearts, our minds, our bodies in the blood of Jesus, fill us with the Holy Spirit, anoint us by the power of your Spirit to glorify Jesus Christ, speak the truth about error, and Father, give us the victory to walk in holiness and purity and the life and power of the Spirit to truly love you, Father, to love Jesus, to love your Spirit. Bless our brothers and sisters. Strengthen them through our meager efforts, empowered by your Spirit, and convict Muslims, Father, to know the true God revealed in Jesus. We love you, Father. Amen. Thank you for forgiving me and forgiving us. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, take over this session for the glory of Jesus in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, brother. Uh, with that said, we love you. Yeah, I can hear you. All right, did you put down your volume in the background, my brother? I did. So now we can see the comments as well. So please yeah, go brother. ahead, brother. And don't forget, brother Al, there's going to be like a six to seven mm -hmm. second lag delay from That's when we correct. say something and then it appears. So now with that said, by the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ, <clears throat> I just posted an article. And for those of you who are not aware, I started what I would call a blog. You know, it's WordPress. It was free, and I can afford free because we're in full-time ministry, <laughs> right? Amen. And so what I try to do is regularly update the blog with articles and rebuttals. So just a couple of days ago, I posted on the blog, which is answeringislamblog.wordpress.com. Answeringislamblog.wordpress.com. I just updated an article where I took the logic of Muhammad found in the Quran to prove that according to the logic of Muhammad, as articulated in the Quran, Allah has at least two sons. And so by the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ, trusting the spirit to fill us and guide us to speak truth without error, even when we speak about Islam, to speak about it accurately, I'm going to unveil the identity of the two sons of Allah. So are you ready, brother? Yes, sir. Now, the beautiful thing about you, brother, and there's not much that is beautiful about you except that Jesus is in you and he makes you beautiful. Amen? At least I'm more beautiful than you. Hey, I can't debate that. The thing is that God has blessed you that your mother tongue is Arabic. So what I want you to do now is I want you to go to the chapter 43 of the Quran and read for us verses 3 and 4. Chapter 43, okay. verses 3 and 4, as we unpack this for the glory of Christ. So let me let me just uh, uh, go there uh, while I'm doing that. You go sure. ahead and just uh, continue to share. Tell us a little bit more, by the way, about your recent visits to the different mosques in different states. 
Uh, by the way, brother, someone's asking permission. Can he upload this video with us to his YouTube page? His name is Rebel Mark. Well, uh, we have no problem with that. Good. Yes. In fact, let me just say, please, folks, take all my videos from my YouTube page, upload them to your YouTube page, and you have even permission to break them down into smaller segments. So if you find a particular segment you like, chop that up, upload it to your YouTube pages, because it's not about us. It's about the glory of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, right? So take our material, spread it for the glory of Christ, <clears throat> disseminate it throughout the world, and also with my articles. Take my articles. As long as you don't sell them, mass produce them. Upload them to your websites because this material is for the body of Jesus Christ, used for the glory of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Go to chapter 43. We chapter 43. Yeah, now before you read it, real quickly, I was blessed <clears throat> to be traveling with a man of God. I'll just call him Pastor Sam, and five other evangelists, women and men, on fire for Jesus Christ, spirit filled. Traveling for a week, we went to Indiana, Michigan, Philadelphia, New, Jew New Jersey, New York, and we did outreach to Muslims and also outreach in the streets. I was proud of these brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ who put me to shame because I saw brothers and sisters, a woman in her late 60s, in fact, she's probably in her 70s, out there one in the morning in the seediest part of Philadelphia. Preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to Amen. drug addicts and prostitutes. Hallelujah. Praying over them, getting them saved. And I saw men and women crying in tears, crying out, begging Jesus Christ for, for mercy and receiving his love and compassion. So it wasn't just reaching Muslims. We reached the people out there. Even in Times Square, they were out there shouting the, the, the glory of Jesus, the gospel of Jesus Christ, proclaiming without shame. And may Jesus make me just as bold as them, as holy as them, and in love with, with Jesus as they were, because I was embarrassed to be in their company because they put me to shame. And I wish I could mention their names, but for their safety, I can't. But you, God knows who they are. And pray for this team. Pray for us. And please ask the Lord to help me to be a holy slave of Jesus as these individuals were, sold out for Jesus as they were, and bold. Man, I'm talking about Times Square. They were One of them had a bullhorn. Just shouting the glory of Jesus and passing out tracks, not ashamed of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So keep praying for that. Amen, brother. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you for uh, reminding me because these are br brothers and sisters. Let me just tell you something. God has blessed Al Fadi, myself, David, and others to be in the pub public limelight. And my prayer is that the blood of Jesus will truly make me a pure, holy vessel. And all my brothers and sisters in the ministry and purify our motives that we're not doing it for attention and praise of men. But let me tell you who the real soldiers are. The real soldiers are those six individuals whom no one knows except Jesus Christ. They're out there every day in the streets preaching to prostitutes, drug addicts, Muslims, Hindus, you name it, sharing them boldly with, with, with the love of Jesus, the good news of Jesus Christ. Their reward is truly with the Lord because these are people that you have not heard of, but God knows them. They are the real warriors. And praise God for those unnamed warriors. You don't know them. Jesus knows them. Thank God for his goodness for raising up these individuals. I pray Amen. we can be a tenth of what they are. Amen. And I am honored to be with them. And I just want to glorify Christ for them because they are the real soldiers, the prayer warriors, praying intensely for these people, fasting for them. And yes, just them. Amen. Amen. And I, uh, I, I uh, definitely uh, reckon that, my brother, and uh, it's amazing. I mean, I go sometimes to places and I join teams and I see uh, the glory of God and the power of the Holy Spirit in action when people just begin to speak the power of God and the gospel and how people get overwhelmed and overtaken by what they hear. And by the way, uh, the librarian says that uh, uh, Chuck Norris beats both of us in beauty. I would like for you to block well, yeah. him, uh, next time, okay? You know, it's ironic. He mentioned Chuck Norris. Now, notice my shirt. Let me see if you can see it on the screen. I'm wearing a Bruce Lee shirt. By the way, pray for me. Jeez. Let me see. Okay, one more. Lord, uh, Lord, 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 Lord. Man. Hold on. You you try to change the... So which verse do you want me to go to? Chapter 43, what? Yeah, 43. But before you do that, I want them to see Bruce Lee. Hold on, man. Don't change your camera angle, you little sinner. Let him see this. You hater. Okay, anyway. Man, what a wicked person. You see, I put Bruce Lee changes. By the way, pray for me. 
to achieve my health goals. I still want to lose 50 pounds and pray. I don't do it for vanity, but for health, for the glory of Christ. So glory to Jesus Christ. You're, now let's get let's get back to you look like 50 pounds right now. Why do you want to lose everything? Hey, my friend, because you can't be prettier than me. You can't be okay, so chapter, 43, what? chapter 43, verses three and four. Okay. And by the way, Bruce Lee will beat Chuck Norris even in his grave. Okay. okay. Well, that's it. Let's go to 43, three and four. Don't hate you haters. Okay, what does it say? What does that passage say? Of course, when in English, we're going to read it, right? You know, so, uh, well, unless, unless you want me to interpret. You know, yeah. I mean. Chapter 3, it says, Indeed, we have made it an Arabic Quran that you might understand. Chapter uh, Verse 4, it says, And indeed it is in the mother of the book with us, exalted and full of wisdom. Okay. Guys, this is where I need your undivided attention for the glory of Jesus Christ. Because right now I'm going to prove to you, according to the logic of the Quran, Allah has a son. I want you to pay attention to what he read. And he knows the Arabic very well. It says that this is an Arabic Quran. So notice why Muslims say that the Quran is only the Quran in Arabic. A translation of the Quran is not the Quran. <clears throat> the reason why they say that, as the Lord Jesus just gives us the health we need to glorify him. The reason why they say that is because of passages such as what he read. Notice what the passage said. This is an Arabic Quran. It's not an English Quran. It's not a Hindi Quran. It's not a Quran in Gujarati. It's an Arabic Quran. So this is where Muslims get, for the you non-Muslims, you serious students of Islam and apologists, this is where Muslims get the idea that the Quran is only the Quran in Arabic, right? Now, but I want you to see what it says about this Quran. In verse 4 it says, it is in this Quran that's in Arabic that we sent down to Muhammad. It is in the mother of the book. Umul Kitab that is with us. So understand, according to what you just read, the Quran has a mother. It originates from that mother because it existed in that mother and originates from that mother before it was sent down to Muhammad. And the mother of the Quran, Umul Kitab, the mother of the book, is with Allah. Now, how does this prove that Allah has an offspring? Well, go to chapter 6, verse 101 of the Quran. And by the way, if you have any questions related to this material, or other related issues, ask in the in the comment section. The Lord Jesus willing, we'll get around to it, answering those questions. So chapter, chapter six, verse one hundred one. Chapter six, verse one hundred one. You got it. I'll be there in a second. Just to let everybody know, this is uh, how my brother Sam spent time with me over the course of two years when I first became a believer to uh, train me and equip me on apologetics. And understanding the Trinity and how to defend the Bible and all, so on and so forth. So I'm always so thankful for this brother and uh, the knowledge that God has given him. Okay. Viking uh, Hawk, before yeah. you said, he said, Hope yeah. Sam sees it, even if I'm not a super chatter. Whether you're a super chat or not, I don't care about that, friend. We don't do it for money, we do it for the glory of Christ. But I didn't see your comment. Lord will not get to it. But now, chapter 6, verse 101. What does it say? Uh, of course, uh, they added the phrase he is indicating that Allah is talking here, originator of the heavens and the earth. How could he have a son when he does not have a companion and he created all things and he is of all things knowing? Okay, understand the argument. This is again Muhammad's logic. Understand his logic. His logic is like this. Allah cannot have a son unless he has a companion, a consort. So notice what it says, wonderful originator of the heavens and the earth. How can he have a son seeing he has no consort? So what's the logic here? The only way for Allah to have a son, and by extension, the only way anyone can have a child is if they have a consort. Without a consort, you can't have a true offspring. To have a true offspring, an offspring that belongs to you, you have to have a consort. Implication, you have to cohabit with someone to have a child. Okay, now, if that's true, Folks, let me know in the comment section. You're getting the logic of Muhammad. If it's true that Allah, who's supposedly all-powerful, cannot truly have an offspring without a consort, then that logic would have to extend to everything else that's less than Allah. Because Allah is supposedly all-powerful. So you have something less than Allah. If it's true that someone who's all-powerful can only have an offspring via a consort, how much more would that apply to something less than Allah? In other words, if you're a creature that's limited, then that would also apply to you, that a creature cannot have an offspring without a consort as well, okay? If that's the logic, we just read in chapter 43, verse 4 of the Quran, 
that the Quran has a mother, and that mother is with Allah. Guys, follow the logic. The Quran is in the mother of the book, Um al Kitab. The Quran has a mother. That mother is with Allah. But you cannot have an offspring without a consort. So if the Quran has a mother, its mother could only sire the Quran, sire the Quran, produce the Quran, if that mother has a consort. So now the question is, who or what is the consort of the Quran's mother? You don't need to guess. The verse tells you. The verse says, the mother of the book that is with us. So the mother of the book is with Allah, meaning Allah is its companion. And this is further confirmed by the fact the Quran is the word of Allah, the speech of Allah, meaning the, the Quran originates from Allah as it does from the mother of the book. So Allah is the source of the Quran as the mother is the source of the Quran. And since the Quran's mother cannot have an offspring without a consort, and the Quran is the word of Allah, and therefore he's the source of the Quran, and the mother is with Allah, ipso facto, guys, Allah is the father of the Quran, and its mother is his consort. Yeah, I mean, I it's uh, what, what I like about this, Sam, is uh, I tell people sometimes if you just use the Quran against itself, you'll find so many, you know, arguments, contradictions, and problems that our friends, Muslim friends, need to resolve themselves before they come attacking. Now, did, now, I want to make sure, since I'm listening to you, I'm also wanting to see the comments. If they're listening, they're following. Guys, did you follow that logic? Do you understand? They, that, uh, one, one, one is saying, we don't care for Sam. We care for Halal Hogan. So, All right, brother. Well, I'll do the whole Halal Hogan impersonation. Now, the Muslim will come back and tell you. Now, watch here, though. The Muslim will come back, uh, Al Fadi, and try to catch you and say, wait, friend, the mother of the Quran is not literal. The expression Um al Kitab is a metaphorical expression referring to the source of the Quran. That is amazing. But now, you know why that's amazing? Because <laughs> that still ends up with the Quran being the offspring of Allah. Why? There are translations out there that you can read. It will translate the word Um al Kitab as the source of the book, the essence of the book, the essence from which the, the Quran originates from. So now understand that mother of the book according to these muslims means the source of the book the source of the quran that which the quran originates from so understand that they're telling you if you're the source of something then you are the parent of that thing Let wow. me break that one. are you sure sam because uh, jesus is called the son of god well well we're gonna get there i'm gonna then show you how the quran proves that jesus is god's son but let's take it one at a time understand what they they're telling you mother the book means the source of the book in other words if you are the source of something if something originates from you if something flows from you proceeds from you you are the source of that thing and in that sense you are its parent not physically biologically sexually but you are its parent in a spiritual metaphorical sense so understand i want people to get the logic to be the source of something makes you the parent of that thing without it requiring sexual activity. So it doesn't require sexual reproduction. All right, well, hold on. Islamic theology teaches the Quran is the word of Allah. It proceeds from Allah. It is the speech of Allah. Allah is the source of the Quran and the Quran originates from Allah. Now, if being the source of something makes you its parent, well, Allah is the source of the Quran. The Quran originates from him. It's Kalam Allah, his speech. It flows from him. It proceeds from him. It originates from him. He is its source. Well, if the Quran is the source, I'm sorry, if Allah is the source of the Quran, and to be the source of something makes you its parent, ipso facto, according to Islamic logic, Allah is the father of the Quran. The Quran is Allah's son. Not only that, but I mean, uh, let, let's use the Quranic argument about Jesus. It says, Wa kalimatuhu. <laughs> Yes, meaning he is yeah. a word from Allah. The source. And we're going to do that, but before you do that, I just want to make sure they're getting it, though. You and I got it. Yeah, hey, guys, uh, please uh, make sure you tell Sam before he gets a heart attack that you got it. Yeah, please. because I, the reason why we're doing these sessions, folks, is to equip you with the best arguments possible to bring Muslims to the feet of Jesus Christ, their only hope of salvation. 
So if we're losing you, then it defeats the person. Because Al Fadi knows this, and I know it. And we're not here to look at each other and be impressed with how, how better looking I am than him. But anyway, now. Let's see if anyone says anything. You have someone t posting uh, Arabic. Anyway, they said, get it, get it, good. All right, amen. Now we're ready to talk about the other son of Allah. The Quran says that Allah has at least two sons, the other son of Allah. Are you now ready to unpack it? The other son of Allah. Yeah, let's do it, man. Okay. Now, remember the argument. You cannot have an offspring without a consort. Now, let's see what the Quran says about Jesus' blessed, glorious conception birth from his blessed, glorious virgin mother by the power of the Spirit. Let's go to chapter 3 of the Quran. And let's read verse 47. Okay, we're going to get there. 347. So you might want to take a look at 47. Notice Mary's what? reaction. Notice Mary's reaction when she's told she's going to give birth to a son, even right. though she's a virgin. That's right. So I'm going to read it. Um, of course, in Arabic, uh, I say it in front of me, but I'll read it in English. It says, she said, that's Mary, my Lord. How will I have a child when no man has touched me? The angel says, such is Allah. He creates what he wills when he decrees a matter. He only says to it, be, and it is. Now, here's what's ironic, Al-Fadi. Mary responds the way the Quran responds when Mary's told she's going to have an offspring, even though she's not married and she's not sexually active. Notice the response is similar to 6101. How can I have a son seeing I'm not unchaste? I'm a chaste virgin and I have no, you know, consort. Answer is, oh, that's easy. But before we unpack this, let's go now to chapter 19 of the Quran and read 20 to 21. All right, 19, 20 to 21. We're going there. Forgive us, folks. I'm just toggling between uh, chapters uh, 19, 20 to 21 because, you know, I didn't know that Sam is into the Quran lately. He's meditating on it during Ramadan. <laughs> All right, so I'm there. 20. Uh, she said, again, talking about Mary, how can I have a boy while no man has touched me and I have not been unchaste? Okay. And uh, verse 21 says, he says, thus it will be. Your Lord says it is easy for me and we will make him a sign to the people and a mercy from us. And okay. it is a matter already decreed okay guys understand mary's response in the quran now side note the quran does not contain the actual historical speeches of mary the lord jesus's apostles or any true prophet of god for that matter these Amen. are speeches that are either plagiarized badly from the bible or made up but for argument's sake guys pay attention in these two passages mary responds similar to chapter 6 verse 101 what did chapter 6 verse 101 say let me repeat it Wonderful originator of the heavens and the earth. How can he have a son, seeing he has no consort? Notice Mary's response is the same. She says to, in chapter 3 it was the angels, but in chapter 19 it's the spirit. That's another contradiction in the birth narrative of Jesus. We can talk about that in a future session or a little later. She says, how can I, a virgin, I'm a virgin sexually, I, I'm not married, how can I conceive and give birth to a son? I have no consort. She's using the same argument the Quran does to show that Allah cannot have an offspring without a consort. What's the response? Oh, that's easy for your Lord. All he does is say, be and it is. You know, it's the matter decreed it will happen. Okay, now let's apply the logic here. The Quran says Allah can only have an offspring if he has a consort. Well, for Mary to have an offspring, if we apply the Quran's logic consistently, she has to have a consort. Now the question is, who is Mary's consort? Well, the one who got her pregnant. Who got her pregnant? Allah did. How did Allah do it? Let's go to chapter 66, verse 12 of the Quran. Chapter 66, verse 12 of the Quran. This again will show, as he goes to Surah Al-Tahrim, chapter 66, verse 12 of the Quran. This again will show, folks, that Allah can have a child an offspring without sexual intercourse. He can sire a child without sexual intercourse. He can sire a child spiritually, doesn't have to do it physically by engaging in sex. When I say spiritually, it's an act of God 
that doesn't require God to engage in physical sexual intercourse. That's right. How did Allah get Mary pregnant? Because clearly the Quran shows that Mary's consort in conceiving Jesus, Mary's consort, let me repeat, in conceiving Jesus, because the Quran says you got to have a consort to have an offspring. So I'm going to use the Quran's logic consistently against the Quran. Mary's consort in conceiving Jesus is none other than Allah because of 66 verse 12. So does that mean? Here, is, here is what I want to say, God, folks. You're listening to us. What Sam is doing, what I do sometimes with the Quran, we're not really endorsing it as a divine book, but it's okay to meet people at the level where they at if they yeah. consider the Quran their book that is perfect. You know what? We're gonna use that perfect book in their eye to show them that their own book condemn their argument sometimes. Yep. So uh, chapter 66, verse 12 says the following. And the example of Mary, the daughter of Imran, who guarded her chastity, so we blew into her garment. I mean, uh, garment. What a terrible translation, man. Through our angel, and she believed wow. in the Lord and his scriptures and was of the devoutly obedient. Hey, brother, can I ask you a question? Yes. Of all the translations, you picked the most perverted and corrupt translation. Why is that? That's okay. I mean, I was uh, thinking that you needed the Arabic for now. That's why I went there. Well, let me let me repeat what you quoted. Your translation. Well, why don't you go through right now the comments. Why I go to the other one that has multiple translations. Okay. Let me. Yeah. Let me. Let me quote the verse accurately. Uh, this is what the verse said, folks. It said, "And Mary, Maryam, binti Imran, daughter of uh, Imran, we breathe." I'm sorry, who guarded her farj, who guarded her okay, private part. translation you want, I have it in front of me right now. Well, yeah, let me, well, I'm reading it. It's okay, I'll just read it. Now you can just have translations up. Let me go. And Mary, the daughter of Imran, who guarded her farj, who guarded her private part, we breathe into it of our spirit. That's what it says. So notice what Allah did to get Mary pregnant. He breathed his ruh, his spirit, into her private part. For what purpose? Because the spirit would enter Mary's body and cause her to conceive the physical body, the human nature of Jesus Christ, without sexual inter intercourse. But who breathed the spirit? Allah. Allah sent the spirit to cause her to get pregnant without sexual intercourse. So who caused her to get pregnant? Allah did, by his spirit. So who's responsible for the pregnancy? Not just Mary, but Allah. Which means, according to chronic, lo chronic logic, Allah is Mary's consort. In causing her to conceive a son, well, if he is the consort who's responsible for causing Mary to get pregnant, albeit without sexual intercourse, there was no sexual activity on the part of Allah, in agreement with the Bible, that means Allah is the father of Jesus, and Muslims, you're stuck with your Quranic logic. There's no way of you getting around your Quranic logic. If you're going to apply the logic of chapter 6, verse 101, consistently, a person can only have an offspring if he or she has a consort. Mary had an offspring, Jesus, but had no male consort. No man touched her. She conceived while a virgin, gave birth while a virgin. Because it was Allah who caused her to get pregnant by the Spirit. So Allah is responsible for the pregnancy, and therefore Allah is the father of Jesus. There's no way of getting around it. So yes. Jesus is the son of Allah. And I want to I say this, Sam. It's kind of interesting, by the way. Uh, our Muslim friends say the Quran uh, never gets corrupted. But here I'm looking at 10 different translations in addition to what I read. And all of them evaded and avoided to mention private part but i tell you this the word in arabic is father jaha and the only meaning for that is her sexual parts between her legs i'm sorry to say it yep yep but now before we move on to the other par uh, part proving that jesus is god's son did everyone understand that by being responsible for causing mary to get pregnant by causing her to get pregnant by his spirit not in a sexual manner, not in a physical manner. There was no sex involved. According to the logic of the Quran, that makes Allah Mary's consort and therefore the father of Jesus. You can't escape the logic, which proves that Allah can have a child, sire a child, without physical sexual intercourse. I just want to make sure they got the argument here. They understood the logic. Put yeah. a one if you do or say yes if you do. And if you don't get it, let me know so we can clarify because there's a set, second element to my argument proving from the Quran Allah has at least two sons, the Quran and Jesus. Okay, so far we got one yes. All right, good. I don't see anyone confused. Let me now further confirm, further confirm 
that Jesus is the son of Allah according to the Quran. And it's ironic because the Quran wants to say Jesus isn't his son, but then says things about Jesus' relationship to Allah, proving he has to be a son. Remember what I said about the term Umul Kitab. In chapter 43, verse 4 of the Quran, it says, This Quran is in the mother of the book, Umul Kitab. Now they'll tell you it's not an actual mother. Mother of the book is simply an expression denoting the source of the Quran. That from which the Quran came. It came from the heavenly exemplar, the preserved tablet, right? The preserved tablet is the source of the Quran. The Quran originates from that tablet. And because it's the source of the Quran, it can be called the parent of the Quran. So understand Quranic logic. If you're the source of something, something flows from you, originates from you, then being the source of that thing makes you its parent. Put, Put a one or say yes if you understand the chronic logic. To be the source of something where something originates from you, being its source makes you its parent. Do you understand the logic? Please let me know, folks, so I can now show you that Jesus is truly, essentially, the Son of God according to chronic logic. Okay. Amen. And, of course, I mean, I don't want to distract now, but that's something maybe we can talk about. Now, think about this. Uh, using the chronic logic, you have a father now, you have a mother, and you have a son. Yep. Yeah, exactly. But now here I'm going to show that Jesus is God's son, not because Allah caused Mary to get pregnant. Jesus is God's son because he is the eternal word of God that originates from God's very own being. When I say God, I mean Allah of the Quran, whom I don't believe to be the same God of the Bible. Now, let's prove it. You guys ready? Let's go to chapter 4 of the Quran. Surah Tanisa, chapter 4, verse 171. Then we can talk about any other topic or open up to Q&A. Guys, if you have questions, right after this point, it's time to ask. Okay. Yep. Four, we're going to be wrapping up, brother, in about 10, 20 minutes from now. Yep, okay. Chapter 4, verse 171. I'm right there. Now, someone asked me a question before you read it. Why does it say we breathe? Because it's denoting the fact that the spirit originates from Allah. It is an essential part of Allah. It comes out of Allah, not from creation, because the spirit is not a creature, but eternal and divine. We can do a topic on the spirit of Allah. Maybe in our next Google Hangout, we can do the spirit in Islam, divine or created. Yes. So when it's all breathe, and the reason, let me explain this again, expound this, because the Bible uses that same metaphor. When it says Allah breathe, that's simply a metaphorical way of denoting the fact that when the spirit comes from Allah, it is the spirit that animates and gives life to creation because you associate breath with life. You don't breathe, you die. You need to breathe to live. So when it says we breathe out the spirit, that's simply the Quran aping biblical language where Yahovah or Jesus breathes the spirit because the breath there becomes a metaphor. God breathing because God is not a physical being. He doesn't physically breathe. Jesus became flesh because he's he became man. But as God, he is spirit, immaterial. So God doesn't physically breathe. So why does it say God breathed the spirit? Because we associate breath with life. And anytime God sends the spirit from himself, that results in the spirit giving life, right? Animating creation or taking life away and bringing about death. That's all it means. With that said, let's now go to chapter 4, verse 171. Right. And of course, Sam is talking about the real God, the true God here. Yeah. You know? But we are the Quran is aping the Bible at this point. Yeah. When it says we breathe into her our spirit, the Quran is aping the Bible because the Quran is trying to be similar to the Bible and sound like right. the Bible to, con to convince people that Allah the Quran is the God of the Bible and he's not. Amen. But that's what Satan does. Okay, so I am a chapter one, four, one. one. Uh, which translation? The one that's accurate to the Arabic. So Pikthal is good, Arberry is good. Okay, uh, I'll read Pikthal. O oh, people of the scripture, do not exaggerate in your religion, nor utter aught concerning Allah, save the truth. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, was only a messenger of Allah, and his word, which he conveyed unto Mary, and a spirit from him. So believe in Allah and his messengers, and say not three, seize, it is better for you, Allah is only one God, far it is removed from his transcendent majesty that he should have a son. He is all that is in the heavens and all that is in earth, in the earth, and Allah is sufficient as defender. Irony of ironies. In a passage that tells Christians, stop saying three, 
and saying Allah is too transcendent to have a son, it just claimed and ascribed to Jesus certain functions and qualities to prove Jesus is fully divine, one with Allah and his son. Now, Amen. how does this passage prove it? Number one, let's unpack it. <clears throat> it says that Jesus, the son of Mary, and none of us would disagree, he's the son of Mary, he's the virgin-born son of Mary, is the apostle of Allah. Now, your translation said only an apostle of Allah. You know the Arabic very well. Confirmed for everyone, it doesn't say only. It simply says in Arabic, Jesus, the son of Mary, is the apostle of Allah, Rasul Allah. Rasul Allah. Does the word only appear in the Arabic? The word Rasul Allah? No, the word only. Of course, Rasul Allah is there, friend. Don't let me lay hands on you and bless you. Yeah, let me let me just go to the Arabic. I just yeah, want to let him check it out. Yeah, it's, only, it's only good for Arabic. Everything else is just good for sleeping and eating. Sorry. So, um, إنما المسيح عيسى بن مريم رسول رسول الله وكلماته. Yeah. Does it say only a? No. No. So understand, it doesn't say he's only this. It says Jesus, the Son of Mary, is an apostle. And I notice the things it says about him. He's the apostle of Allah. The son of Mary, the word of Allah, Kalimatuhu, that was cast down to Mary and a spirit from him. No Christian who knows his Bible or her Bible would, de would deny any of these things. Now, let me give you the biblical basis for all these titles. Number one, we know that our Lord Jesus was conceived and born from his blessed mother while she was a virgin by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's taught. Now, we're not going to turn there, uh, L, but I'm going to have you turn to other passages. Where do we find that? Matthew chapter 1. We're going to read from 16 to 25, Matthew 1, 16 to 25, Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, 26 to 35. You can also read the rest of the chapter and Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7, Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 7. So the Quran agrees with the Bible. Jesus is the virgin born son of Mary. No dispute that. Does the Bible agree or confirm the Quran statement that Jesus is an apostle of God? Because the word apostle or messenger, Rasul, means someone sent out, a sent out one. I send someone to represent me, to speak on my behalf with my message. That's what an apostle messenger is. Let's go to Hebrews 3, verse 1. If you don't mind, brother, if you can turn to your Bible, Hebrews 3, verse 1. Is Jesus an apostle of God the Father? Watch where we're going with this. We may only have time for this. All right. Hebrews 3, verse Hebrews 1. Hebrews 3, verse 1. All right. Therefore, holy brothers, you who share in a heavenly calling, consider Jesus the apostle and high priest of our confession. So notice, Jesus is the apostle of God. He is a messenger of God because as the son, he was sent out by the father to represent the father. And our Lord says it in other places, like John 17, 18, as you sent me into the world, so I send them into the world. So yes, we agree with the Quran. Jesus is the son of Mary. He is the apostle of God. Now, is he a spirit from God? Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15, 45. All right. 1 Corinthians 15, 45. We're going to have fun. And I think we we'll only have time for this, but it's up to you. I'm free. So we can okay. go continue or we can continue uh, some other day. But use me for the glory of Christ. 1 Corinthians 15. 15, 45. Now, does the Bible agree Jesus is a spirit from God the Father? A spirit that proceeds from God the Father, like chapter 4, verse 171 said, Ruh and Min, a spirit from Him, Allah. Even though all of the Quran is not God the Father, still, for argument's sake, 1 Corinthians 15 45. It says, Thus it is written, The first man Adam became a living being, the last Adam became a life given spirit. Oh, wow. So Jesus, by virtue of being God and man, remember, Christ is one person, truly God, who became flesh, became man. As God, he is spirit. His nature is spirit. And as God, he is spirit that gives life, a life-giving spirit because he's God. So in respect to Jesus' deity, being God, he is spirit that gives life. So, so far, what the Quran says, no Christian would disagree. So far, what the Quran says, no Christian would disagree. Now, notice what's interesting. Then it says, his word, kalimatuhu, now here's where we're going to get the Arabic expert to confirm my point. It says, his word, kalimatuhu, Allah's word, the word of Allah, alqaha illa Maryam, sent down, cast down to Mary. Now he's going to confirm. 
doesn't this prove that if Jesus is God's word sent down, that means he must have been up there before he came down to Mary? Am I right, right. or am I wrong? Right, and, and the word alqa that means you have something and you throw it. You know, it's almost like you throw it down. Throw it down from where? Well, what, what is Allah? According Thank to Allah. you. Guys, understand, this verse of the Quran confirms Jesus was there existing with Allah, who's supposedly the God of the Bible. He was there as his word, who then was thrown down to enter Mary's womb. And here's what's beautiful. It says, when he did come down to Mary's womb, pay attention, folks, he came down as a spirit from him. Exactly what the Bible teaches. Because the Bible teaches, before Jesus became flesh, he was there with the Father, eternally existing with the Father. He didn't have a body. He didn't have a material form. He was there as spirit. Because God by nature is spirit. Yep. Because God by nature doesn't have a body. He can assume any body he wants. But by nature, he's bodiless. So Jesus was there as spirit, a spirit existing with God as his word, who then came down as spirit to become flesh in the blessed womb of his mother. Right. That's let me say, said. Yeah, let me say the following. I mean, uh, we're going to get to the uh, objection right now. But but it didn't say that it uh, uh, Jesus is his word that he gave to Mary, for instance. He didn't say that. He could have used that word. And even if he said it, it's still damaging. But let's say... It didn't say that. It says it didn't say he's the word, uh, his word that he created in Mary. No, it didn't say that. Exactly. And now I'm going to get to the objection. Muslims will tell you this is uh, just uh, all it means is like God says, "Be and it became." Where well, does I'm it refute that? that? Yes. You want to refute it now, or let me finish the point, then we can refute it. No, you can refute it uh, after you're done. Yeah. Okay. We're going. I already anticipated that objection. We'll refute that. But first of all, I want everyone to understand what we read. Four one seven says, "Jesus is the word of God." That was thrown down into Mary. And when he was thrown down, he came down as a spirit. Exactly what the Bible teaches. So here's an example. Muhammad aping what Christians believe. Aping the Logos, Logos Christology of John. Because this is an echo of John 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God in nature. The Word became flesh. Muhammad is hearing Christians affirming Jesus is the Word of God that came down to become flesh. He takes that over, makes it part of the Quran. Not realizing and confirming that part, he's pretty much refuting himself and proving that Jesus is no mere creature. Thank you, Muhammad, for not knowing what you were doing by adopting that part of Christian theology so we can use by the power of the Spirit to expose you for the glory of Jesus. So what does that mean? Jesus came down from God as his word. When he was with God as his word, he was spirit. He wasn't flesh. Came to Mary, he became flesh. Now, if I'm right that Jesus was there with God, already alive with God as his word, as a spirit who then came down to Mary and became flesh, then that would mean at the culmination of his ministry, when his ministry was done, he wouldn't return to the dust like all human beings, like Muhammad, because we're from the dust. He would return from his source. If he originates from God, then he'd return to God. Surprise, surprise. Chapter 3, verse 55 of the Quran. And chapter 4, verse 158. Chapter 3, verse 55. Chapter 4, verse 158. Both those passages say, Allah took Jesus to himself. Since Jesus came down from Allah as a spirit to become flesh from Mary, he goes back to Allah, but with one difference. He now goes back as flesh. He came down as spirit, goes back as flesh. Because according to Mutawatir, multiply attested narrations attributed to Muhammad and his followers. Allah took Jesus to himself, body and soul. He was taken physically, bodily, to wherever Allah is. He came down from Allah as a spirit, became flesh, went back to Allah as a flesh body. Wow. That's all in the Quran, 355, 4158. Now, what's the point here? And you have to contradict himself, affirming John's logos. Or word Christology, that Christ is the eternal word who's fully divine, who became flesh and returned to the Father from where he came. All of which contradicts the other statements in the Quran that says Jesus is just a servant. But here's the point, folks. In Islamic tradition, Jesus is called Kalimat Allah, Ruh Allah. Kalimat Allah means the word of Allah. Ruh Allah means the spirit of Allah. Don't believe me. Peruse the Muslim sources. Ask any Muslim scholar. Is Jesus called word of Allah, spirit of Allah? Yes, he's the only one called this. Now, folks, 
if Jesus is the word of God, the word of Allah, and God's word is uncreated because he's always existed with his word, and Jesus is that word, guess what, folks? That means Jesus is uncreated as to his essence. He's always existed with God as his word, which explains why the Quran says he came down from Allah as his word. So here the Quran affirms Christ is uncreated. He's the eternal word existing with God before he became flesh, became flesh when he came down as a spirit, went back to God from where he comes. Now, how does this prove that Jesus is the son of God? Number one, Jesus is the word of God, meaning God is the source of that word. That word originates from Allah, from his being. It's a part of him. He's the source of it. That word is Jesus. So if God is the source of that eternal word, who is Jesus, who becomes the man Christ Jesus. And to be the source of something means you're the father of that thing. God being the source of Jesus, his word, means God is the father of Jesus. You cannot escape that logic. Here is proof that Jesus is the son of God, the son of Allah. Thanks, brother. And if you can close the last minute, maybe. Yeah, I want to uh, now refute the objection. Yes, sir. Okay, now, how do Muslims then refute this point? They'll say, no, 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 you got it wrong. Jesus is called the word of God because God created him by his word. He said, Tum kun fayakun, be, and he is. So the word of God created Jesus. Jesus is not the word of God. Two responses. Number one, the passage didn't say God sent his word to create Jesus in Mary's womb. The passage says God sent his word into Mary and that Jesus is his word. Kalimatuhu. Jesus is the word sent down. The word didn't create Jesus. The word is Jesus who entered Mary's womb. This is further confirmed in chapter 3 of the Quran, verse 45. Read that real quickly for me, brother. Chapter 3, verse 45. Let me go there. And then I'm going to end it with the second point, and we're done. An excellent session by the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Chapter 3, you said, verse 45. Verse 45. I just want to make sure I'm not going to your corrupt versions here. 435. We're waiting on it. Uh, here it is. 435. Which translation? Oh, man. Uh, uh, oh, that's fine. Doesn't internet, matter. Internet is going down, bro. Okay, What's well, chapter here? 3, verse 45. It says this, the angels announced to Mary, glad tidings. We give you glad tidings of a word from him, Kalimat Minhu, whose name is the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary. Catch this. Oh, Mary, we announce to you good news of a word from him, Kalimat Minhu, Ismuhu, Messiah, Isa, Ibn Maryam. Now, why is that important? The angels tell Mary, we're giving good news of a word from him. A word from him, the name of the word. It says the word's name. His name is, smuhu is masculine. Smuhu means his name. Whose name? The word. The word is a his. It's a person. His name is Messiah, Jesus, Son of Mary. So it's telling you that the word that's given to Mary is a person. It has a personal identity. The word is a man. And the name of this word is the Messiah, Jesus. It says the word, his name is Messiah, Jesus. If Jesus was created by the word, why does chapter 3, verse 45 say, the word is a person, a male, whose name is Messiah, Jesus. Isn't this proof that the word is Jesus? Jesus is the word, not that the word created Jesus. That's right. That's right. And, Go ahead. And it says, I mean, I, you and I talked about this before. The, the very translation of the word word in Arabic is feminine, but it's given a masculine name. Yeah, kalimat is feminine, but it's muhu. The right. feminine gender of kalimat is governed by the fact that kalimat is a male, Jesus Messiah. That's right. That's, That's right. who the word is. It's a person. So that refutes the claim that the word created Jesus. No, Jesus is the word. The word is Jesus. The word is a male. And the word's name is Jesus Messiah. And the second objection. If it's true that Jesus is God's word because he's created by God's command, that God's word created Jesus, that's why he's the word, then Adam was created by the word of God. Angels were created by the word of God. The heavens and earth were created by the word of God. That means all of us should be called the word of God. Adam is the word of God. al fadi is the word of God. I'm the word of God. Yet nowhere in the Quran do you find Allah calling Adam the word of Allah. 
my word from me, or angels, my word. No one is called the word of God, even though they're all created by God's command, only Jesus. This refutes the pathetic argument that Jesus is God's word because God created him by his word. Because then Adam should be called the word, angels should be called the word, but none of them are called the word, even though they're created by the word, because that's not why Jesus is called the word. Jesus is the word because he is the one who exists with God eternally, sent down by God to make God known. He's part of God as the revelation of God, the only perfect revelation of God who became flesh. That's why he's called the word of God. And again, I'm not saying Muhammad was trying to affirm the Trinity. Muhammad was simply aping Christian theology, taking enough Christian theology to mix it in with his Quran with the hopes of enticing Christians to take his message seriously, not realizing that those portions of Christian theology that he accepted end up refuting him, exposing him, showing the contradiction of the Quran, proving Jesus is more than a man. He's the eternal word, fully divine, who became flesh, the God-man, making Muhammad an antichrist, a false prophet. Amen. Allah has two sons, the Quran and Jesus, according to the logic of the Quran. You can't escape this, Muslims. And I challenge any Muslim to debate me on this topic. Yeah. Uh, Loris K, you're asking a question about the difference between Islamic and uh, understanding of inspiration, biblical one. We will visit this maybe in the next, uh, uh, you know, Google Hangout. So, brother, uh, yes, Lord willing, if you're available next week. Uh, we I'm available, but prayer request. Saints, I need you to pray for me, especially hard this week and fast. I got a big event, a big trial without going to details on may 30th i need jesus to miraculously show up and save me for his glory so i can continue to do ministries pray for miraculous intervision that jesus shows up and protects me to do ministry he doesn't need me but i need a miraculous intervention may 30th i need god to show up to save me from the evil one by the power of the blood of jesus by the power of the spirit and to save my children so guys pray for me if you believe god has called ministry pray he keeps me holy in love with him provide my needs and fight for me because the enemy is coming after me, but he will Amen. lose because Jesus has won. Amen. So, brother, uh, once uh, you know, if you're available next week, uh, yes, I am. God let willing, us know, and we will make an announcement, and then we will talk about another topic. Uh, everybody else, thank you so much for joining us. We apologize for any uh, delay that took place today. This is our first time doing uh, doing it together, so we were trying to learn our way, and uh, looks like we uh, finally got it. Hopefully, we'll begin to uh, test it a couple of times, and then we'll schedule it regularly, and uh, you will be able to basically join us uh, periodically. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, brother. May the Lord bless you richly. Until we meet again, God bless you. take care. Christ is risen. Amen.